I just cut my hair, so please ignore if my uh, shirt is covered in it. Hey, I'm Hannah, welcome back. I'm a writer and today I'm reading a novel I wrote as a tween. It's called Briar Manor and this is installment two. And if you don't wanna watch the first video, all you missed is that it was written in 2010 and it shows I wrote this book in about a week because one of my friends told me that there was like no way I was gonna win NaNoWriMo because I hadn't written anything and it was the end of the month. I did win NaNoWriMo, but the book isn't good. I made it all up as I went and I'm sure it gets worse toward the end, so I'm excited to see that. The story follows three teenage friends and the last chapter left off with them entering an old abandoned mansion called Briar Manor. I think it's about to get a little spooky, so let's get hopping. So they just broke into that cellar door and then we're getting some Saya background. I think I may have messed up my hair. It's okay. I'll mess it up more and then it'll look right. Saya Matthews has lived in Leandro, Illinois with her father for as long as she can remember. Up until a few months ago, she didn't have any friends and school was torture. Also, I didn't go to school and I was just trying my best to write what I imagine public school is like. I didn't do very good. She often had dreams of barricading the entire population of her school inside of it and burning it to the ground whilst laughing maniacally. Good God. Since Nick transferred, things had gotten significantly better. Wasn't Nick kicked out of like 11 public schools in the last year? How many public schools are there? And why did he not try Saya's yet? There's a lot of uh, belief suspension that has to go on to enjoy this story, but let's continue. No one's gonna screw with you when a six foot four Rocky Balboa is snarling at them. Nick is very large. Should I close the door in case someone walks by? Nick asked, pointing to the cellar door. Alexis turned around. Probab, no, Saya shouted. What if we get stuck? Stuck in a house, Nick asked. I've got my cell phone, Saya, Alexis said. I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I bet I'd make up what cell phones are like too. Saya shrugged and Nick pulled the door closed. Now with only Alexis's light to show the way. Wait, why does she need a pen light if she had a cell phone? I bet it was a flip phone, Never mind. This was 2010. Now with only Alexis's light to show the way, they walk close together and look for a door. This looks like a tornado shelter, Alexis said, but there should be a door leading to the inside of the house. She shined her light along one wall, but only saw shelves of empty wooden boxes. I think I found it, Nick said. Alexis turned the light to him. He had his hand on a doorknob. Is it locked? Alexis asked. He turned the knob and pushed the door open. Nope. Let's go. Alexis lead the way. Babe. Saya stepped out of the cellar door into a large parlor. There was plenty of light streaming through the windows. Alexis flicked off her flashlight. Pieces of furniture covered in white sheets were scattered around the room. An inch of dust layered everything. Look at this, Alexis said. She picked up an ornate looking box and wiped dust off the lid. Sweet. <laughs> Nick walked up to a giant portrait of a family, a man, a woman, and two little girls. It's the twins that died. Oh, this is very spooky. Are those the twins that were killed here? Saya asked. She stepped closer to examine it. The man looked painfully stoic, but the woman had a nice smile. I love their dresses, Alexis said. The twin wore matching yellow gowns with silver ribbons. Yellow and silver sound awful together. So what are we looking for, Alexis? Nick asked. I don't know, Alexis replied. I just wanted to see what we could learn about the murders. Saya's head snapped up. What? You didn't say you were writing about that. What else would I have wanted to come here for? To induct a severe case of asthma? Thump. Ooh, a thump. What was that? Nick looked up. Sounded like he came from the room above us. Let's go look, Alexis suggested. There's no use arguing with you people, is there? I can't see the point in it, replied Alexis. Nick headed for a door. There's probably a staircase in the foyer. Let's go. How do you know where you're going, Nick? Nikolai Elton, we get some Nick background. Let's go. Nikolai Elton and his brothers were raised to be refined and well-mannered gentlemen. Oh, something happened with Nick though. At least his brothers were. <laughs> Nick got screwed up somewhere along the way. No one's really sure what happened there. When Nick isn't busy disappointing his parents, his hobbies include, but are not limited to, wreaking havoc, peeing in public fountains, and harassing, alienating, offending the people around him. Well, found stairs, Saya called from the next room. Nick followed her voice into a ballroom of sorts. This is massive, Alexis exclaimed, walking in from the other from another room. The fact that this was 11 years ago and I don't remember writing any of it is a little bit alarming. Like, what else did I do, you know? The room was pretty huge. The ceiling was twice as high as the parlor they were in earlier. Giant chandeliers hung in a row, casting strange reflections on the walls as the light from the windows hit them. There wasn't any furniture in here, aside from a long table al lining each wall. I do miss the freedom of just writing a story that doesn't have to make sense like no questions asked sure there's a giant abandoned haunted mansion in the middle of this small illinois town what is that quote by some painter who said something about like i spent 30 years learning to become an expert painter and my entire life learning how to paint like a child or something i feel that nick rapped on one of the giant pillars with his fist i think this is marble so is the floor alexis said she was lying on her back in the middle of the room what are you doing nick laughed Making marble angels, she said, sliding her arms and legs as if she were in snow. That's how the rich kids do it. Where's Saya with the alleged staircase, Nick asked. 
Over here, Saya called. Nick glanced around. I swear it sounds like she's in this room. Oh, is there a secret passageway for the main staircase? I am. Saya stepped out of a wall at the end of the room. Whoa, Alexis exclaimed. How'd you do that? Do what? Alexis jumped up and ran to where Saya had appeared. You came through the wall. No, I didn't. There are two walls. Saya turned and walked back into the wall. She stuck her arm out and waved. See? Nick walked to the opposite side and saw there were two walls, one right in front of the other, but didn't reach the other end of the room. You could walk between them, but it was invisible from anywhere else. Oh, so it's like they're staggered. That doesn't feel like it'd be that invisible. Trippy, Alexis said. Nick stepped between the walls and was in a sort of hallway. There were the stairs at the end of it. I don't think this is the normal staircase, he said. Maybe it's a secret passage. Yeah. Sweet. Saya, you can be Nancy Drew, Alexis said, walking towards the staircase. Nick, you can be Joe Hardy standing on Frank Hardy's shoulders and I'll be their pet dog. That's kind of funny, guys. Also, I love that Alexis really is peak homeschooler, both in her humor and in the media references she makes. Show me a homeschooled bitch who doesn't love Nancy Drew. They don't exist. They walked to the top of the stairs and found a plain wooden door. This door must feel quite inadequate in a house of spectacular doors, Alexis commented. Is it locked? Saya asked. Alexis tried the knob. Yep. Nick rammed his shoulder into it and it swung open. <laughs> nope. <laughs> They've each got one personality trait. Alexis is weird, Nick is large, and Saya is scared. That's all we've got and it's working for me. You're like a giant Swiss army knife with hair, Saya peered in. There aren't any windows. Alexis shoved her hands in her pockets. Where's my flashlight? It probably fell out while you were writhing on the floor, Nick said. Eh, I'll be back. Alexis ran back down the stairs. Saya turned to the open doorway. It's so creepy not being able to see what's in there. What if it's full of something horrible, like like dead bodies? Nick supplied, ew. Maybe a serial killer has been secretly hiding out in here. He brings his victims here and hangs them around the room. It's like Tim Burton meets Feng Shui. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop it, Nick. Saya covered her ears. Oh, come on, he said. Write this down. This has bestseller potential. Are y'all writing it down? Nick paused. All those dead eyes are watching you right now, Saya. I don't think they'd be pleased with you breaking into their final resting place. You suck! Saya punched him in the arm. Domestic abuse, I'm pretty sure there's a hotline you can call Nick. Alexis bounded up the stairs. Don't worry, Saya. If there are any angry ghosts, it would be those twins and their mother. People that have been ritualistically killed aren't allowed to haunt anything. They've already had their dramatic moment. I hate you both, Saya glared. Let's go, Alexis stepped into the room, shining her flashlight at the floor to keep from tripping on anything. Guys, seriously, Saya protested, we shouldn't be investigating strange sounds in a house we broke into. She's right. Found a light, Alexis flipped a switch, and lights flickered on, illuminating the room. More furniture covered in sheets reminded Saya of an army of ghosts. An army of ghosts that were staring at her, plotting her demise. So I'm in everyone's point of view. This is omniscient, but it's also, like you can tell which character is making which observation. I think they're very distinct. Good job, baby Hannah. I'm not mad about it. Look at this, Alexis was pointing to another portrait. It's exactly the same as the one downstairs. Nick and Saya stepped next to her and they all looked at the picture. Ah, no it isn't, Saya said. Look at the cane in Dad's hand. Alexis squinted. What about it? The one in the picture downstairs had an eagle's head for the handle, Saya said, pointing. This one has a lion's head. I hadn't noticed. How do you remember that, Alexis asked. My grandfather collect canes. He has the eagle one. Why would they have two practically identical portraits painted, Nick asks. Wasn't that really expensive? I'm like about to shit myself because I have, it's actually a romance and it's a woman whose like great aunt dies and she goes to her house to get it fixed up to sell. And um, the aunt had a big painting at the end of her hallway that the girl remembers from when she was little. And she sees it and she's like, oh yeah, that old painting. And then as she goes to the house, she finds more paintings and then she ends up lining them all together and looking at them. And there's like one small difference. And that difference is like a clue that sends her on this treasure hunt. I've been like this. <laughs> Alexis shrugged. When your nose is running money, that's really funny. Did I steal that or did I make that up? When your nose is running money, I guess you have the option of doing useless things. Do you ever have a metaphor that isn't disgusting? Saya asked. Alexis ignored her, leaning closer to the painting. It's still really weird. She touched the tip of her finger to the cane. I don't think you should touch it, Saya began. Snap. I love the just atrocious amount of onomatopoeias that I have included here. Alexis jerked her hand back. Wasn't me. <laughs> It sounds like you opened something, Nick said. He ran his hand along the sides of the frame. This is some real Nancy Drew hours. The cane moved, Saya said slowly. They all put their faces close to the picture. It did, Alexis exclaimed. Nick pulled at that part of the picture and the cane's lion head easily slipped off. You broke it, Alexis pointed at him. It's meant to come off, Nick said. Look at it. He held up the piece of canvas to show the sides to be perfectly cut. While Alexis and Nick were examining the piece that came off, Saya took a closer look at the hole in the canvas. With the backing now visible through the hole, Saya could see the key sitting there. It was fastened into it with a small piece of twine. Guys, there's a key. Saya untied the string and removed the key. 
I wonder what it's for. And why do they go to such extents to hide it? Alexis added. Ooh, intrigue. Nick turned and continued walking through the room. So what do you think that sound was? He asked. Probably the house settling, Sia suggested. Mm, sure, that must have been it, Alexis said. Surely not some restless and vengeful spirit. She quietly stepped behind Sia and touched her arm. Ugh! Sia squealed. Alexis, I hate you. Really, we should probably get going, Alexis said. Yeah, I'm starved, Nick agreed. Thank God, Sia said. They made their way back to the cellar, with Alexis and Nick trying their best to make Sia piss herself with fear, and Sia cursing their existence and threatening to eat their firstborn children. At no point... Does this prose take a break? Want to give the Smithsons a final farewell before we leave? Alexis whispered to Saya as they were reaching the cellar. I don't know why I'm friends with you. Saya shoved her way through the cellar door leading outside. She crossed her arms and waited for Nick to open it. Nick threw it open. There you go, princess. Saya huffed and started up the stairs. Well, this was fun, Nick said to Alexis. We should do it again sometime, Alexis said. Oh, I still got the key. I'll go put it back. Guys, Saya called from outside. I told you this was a bad idea. I was also pretty decent at ending a scene. You want to end on a note that make people want to keep reading? That's not bad. Saya, Nick, and Alexis sat with their backs against the white bricked wall of the holding cell. Apparently, a concerned citizen had seen them going into the house and took it upon themselves to call the police. They'd arrived an hour later as the kids were coming back out. Make it like four hours, then we're, uh, then we're in business. Prompt Illinois police force at its best. I'm so screwed, Saya groaned, slumping against the wall. Dad is going to kill me. As this is my first infraction, I think my mother will be relatively lenient, Alexis observed. The way that she talks makes me want to hit her in the face. I'm pretty sure my parents have seen this coming since third grade, Nick said. Alexis pulled the key from her pocket and rolled it between her fingers. You still have that? Saya asked. I forgot to put it back, Alexis said. Great, now we're trespassers and thieves. Why did I spell thieves like that? Jesus. I need food, Nick wailed. Alexis leaned her head against the wall and contemplated the day's events. They'd broken laws, confronted Sia's childhood fears, discovered a mystery, been arrested, skipped lunch, and discovered absolutely nothing helpful towards her research paper. Alexis examined the key in her hands. It was certainly cool looking. Didn't look like she'd be having an opportunity to put it back. Maybe she could put it, make it into a necklace. I had so many antique key necklaces as a child. It looked gold-plated with a ruby on each side of the handle. She looked closer. There were two S's carved into each side. Hmm. S for Smithson, she mulled. Did you say something? Nick asked. The bell on the top of the door rang. Why do they have a bell on top of the door in a police station? <laughs> Nick's parents walked in and marched straight to the counter. The officer there pointed toward the cell they were sitting in. Nikolai Alice Elton. Alice, I love that. <laughs> Nick's mother stood next to his father with her arms crossed. Alice? Alexis whispered to Saya. You have landed yourself in a whole world of trouble, young man, his father piped in. You know, parent talk. There's my cue, Nick muttered. Good luck, guys. Nick stood and waited while the guard unlocked the cell. I swear, I knew you'd end up here when you locked your third grade teacher in the bathroom with those raccoons. How'd you get raccoons in the bathroom, Nick? His mother continued, scolding him while his father filled out paperwork and all the way out the door. Nick cast one more glance at Saya and Alexis with a pained look on his face. The door slammed behind him. Think she'll kill him? Alexis asked. Probably, Saya said. I'll not be far behind. Guess this is kind of my fault, Alexis said. Kinda, Saya mumbled. It was your bloody idea. Bloody? <laughs> Ugh. Alexis looked at her apologetically. Saya laughed. It was fun, though. Alexis patted her on the shoulder. I think you've made some extreme progress today. Saya untied her sneaker and pulled out the shoelace. She tied it in a knot and started playing Cat's Cradle. I did this all the time. Mom should be here soon, Alexis said. Is your dad still at work? Yep, Saya said. It would take him at least an hour to get here, assuming he left as soon as he got the message I gave to his secretary. I really am sorry about this, Saya, Alexis said. It's fine, Saya shrugged. Remember that muffin I gave you yesterday? My dog licked it. I guess we're even. You're a horrible human being, Alexis said. The door opened again, this time revealing Alexis's mother. Alexis slid to the floor and hid under the bench. Alexis, Saya began. Alexis grabbed Saya's feet and pulled them in front of her face. Shh. Alexis? Leon, the officer at the desk called, your mother is here. <laughs> your mom's here. Mrs. Leon walked up and leaned against the cell door. Hi, Saya. Is Alexis here by any chance? She asked, crouching down and looking directly at Alexis. Mm, no, I think she left, Saya said. Alexis didn't move. Alexis, Mrs. Leon prompted. Who's Alexis? Alexis asked. If you don't come out now, I'm going to flush your entire collection of fossilized mealworms down the toilet in a public bathroom where people pee. What the fuck? Saya lifted up her feet and Alexis slowly slid out. Mrs. Leon stood up. Saya, your dad asked me to take you home with us. He didn't want you to have to wait here by yourself. Great, thanks. Saya stood and kicked Alexis in the ribs. Ow! Alexis squealed. Mommy! Pretty sure you deserve that one, kiddo. Her mom turned for the door. Saving me some time, anyway. Saya sat on Alexis's bed, throwing grapes at Sir Meows. It's not as fun when he stops running from them. <laughs> he lives to disappoint, Alexis said from the floor. She was painting a giant mongoose on the door of her closet. Take a shot every time Alexis is painting something so totally random on the door of her closet. 
Alexa's mother had given her a full 30-second lecture during the car ride home about how she shouldn't break into suspicious houses. After that, she said nothing of it. Her mom wasn't one for dragging things out. Alexis had offered to make a blood oath promising to never do it again, but her mother said that wouldn't be necessary. Not sure what that sounded like to you, but to Alexis it sounded like permission. So when are we going back? Alexis asked Saya, finishing off her mongoose. You're kidding, right? Saya flipped off of the bed and sat next to her. Don't tell me you're not dying of curiosity, Alexis retorted. That's not PC. I'm not dying of curiosity, Saya said flatly. Now say it without lying, Alexis said. You're impossible. I have a cat with clinical depression, Alexis replied, scooping up some meows. Your argument is invalid, inavold, inavolid, inavlid. Can you diagnose a cat with depression? I guess. No computer, no TV, no iPod, no iPod, no cell phone, no Xbox, no cake, no cake. <laughs> Nick's mother had been creating this extensive list since he left the police station. His father remained relatively silent, as he always did. What about breathing? Nick suggested. Don't talk back to me, boy, his mother glared at him. You're lucky we don't throw you out into the streets. As I'm 16, I'm about 70% sure that's illegal. I'm about 100% sure that breaking into someone else's house is illegal, his mother huffed. Whose idea was this anyway? I'm assuming yours. Yeah, it was mine, Nick replied. I like Nick. Of course it was. She shook her head in disdain. I should just lock you up so you're not a burden to society. Is that what you want? We do have a basement, you know. Jesus. Nick didn't say anything. She continued with no encouragement. I've been letting you hang out with those two girls because I thought they'd be a good influence on you. Now I have to worry about what kind of influence you are on them. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been in the same school for over three months with no incident, Nick pointed out. How sad is it that that's an accomplishment for you? He's doing his best. Nick sighed and turned his face to the window. She seemed to be done with her rant for now, but rest assured it would reoccur in several different forms for weeks to come. Retweet. It was already getting dark. Nick imagined he'd be sent straight to his room as soon as he got home. And you can go straight to your room as soon as we get home, his mother said, to think about what you've done. Does anyone ever really think about what they've done when they're sent to their room? Nick personally would sit at his window and try to hit birds with a slingshot. No thinking was ever accomplished. His mother was silent for a full 20 seconds. I swear, Nikolai, she said. This might just be the straw that- oh, fuck. Control fine camel. I swear, Nikolai, she said, this might just be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Not the camel. Nick had a game he played where he counted the number of cliches his mom could utter in a single discussion. 14 so far, 27 more, and she'd break her old record. Burn. <laughs> well, you don't have to come, but I'm going back, Alexis said. I'll just go at night this time. Why? Saya asked, exasperated. What is in there that's so important? I don't know, Alexis shrugged. But that's the point, I guess. I feel like there's something in there just waiting to be unveiled. Maybe it doesn't want to be unveiled. Why can't you just leave it alone? Alexis rummaged through her room and started piling things on her bed. Three flashlights, a camera, her cell phone, the key, a black hoodie, a pocket knife, binoculars, and an electric lantern. All right. She grabbed a backpack from her closet and threw everything in. You're not serious, Saya said. Come on, Saya, Alexis pleaded. Someone knocked on the door. Alexis threw the bag under the bed. Come in, she called. Alexis's mom stuck her head in. Saya, your dad's here. Thanks, Mrs. Leon, Saya said. She closed the door. I'm going tonight, Alexis said. You can meet me there if you want. I won't, Saya said. She grabbed her jacket and left. Nick headed for the stairs. I don't want to see your face until morning, Nikolai, his mom called after him. His brother met him at the top of the stairs. Nice going, bro. Shut up, Den Dennis. <laughs> Shut up, Dennis. Nick walked past him. No, seriously, Dennis said. I'm glad one of us isn't afraid to be less than perfect. Nick nodded at him and pushed his bedroom door open, locking it behind him. He walked across the room and climbed out the window. So, like, the characters are all ridiculous, yes, but we've got a lot of different and complicated kinds of relationship dynamics happening. Dennis's dialogue here is a little to the point, but I do like that relationship setup. Saya, this is unlike you, her father said in his usual even tone. Oh wait. <clears throat> Saya, this is unlike you, her father said. I know, she mumbled from the passenger seat. Is there anything we need to talk about, he asked. Not really. He paused. I'm concerned about permitting you to remain friends with Alexis and Nikolai. Dad, it wasn't them, she said quickly. It was my idea. <laughs> They're all gonna say it's their idea. That's very cute. He appeared to mull that over. The silence stretched into minutes and Saya tried not to squirm. Well, he said slowly, I guess everyone deserves a chance to do something reckless at some point in their life. Saya looked at him. Just promise me this won't become a recurring theme, he said. I promise. I like that their parents are all reacting differently. I think that's cool. Alexis sat by her door, listening for her mother. She had gone to bed an hour ago, but sometimes she took a while to fall asleep. Alexis would wait another 10 minutes, and if she didn't hear anything, she'd go. She looked at her watch, 11.46 p.m. She pulled her bag from under the bed and looked through it. Glancing around the room, she found her taser and threw that, it, threw that in for good measure. 11.48, close enough. She turned off her light and opened the window. Pausing to listen for a minute, she was convinced her mom was asleep. She climbed out of the window, standing on the ridge of the first story roof. <laughs> She's gonna leap off of it again. Barely keeping her balance, she slid the window closed. She could still see under the crack of her bedroom door and the lights were still off. That was easy enough. She sat on the ridge, then hopped down. Took you long enough. Alexis threw her hand over her mouth to quiet her yelp. God, Nick, you scared me. 
Lurking is my forte, he replied. I've only been here a few minutes. You're so predictable. Alexis kicked him in the shin. Predict that. <laughs> I know they're ridiculous, but I love them. Nick and Alexis crept through alleys toward Briar Manor to avoid being seen. Sai would be helpful right about now, Nick commented after getting lost for the fifth time. They eventually found their way and were crouching between two buildings across the street from Briar. How'd you hoodwink Nick into coming back, Saya asked, sliding out from behind a pile of boxes. Natural curiosity, Nick replied. Congratulations, by the way. On what, Saya asked, on coming here? Alexis is an idiot, Saya shrugged. Couldn't let her go alone. Ditto, Nick said. She'd probably get herself locked in somewhere and starve to death or something. Alexis looked at them. Are you done? Let's go, Nick said. He glanced around, then stood and ran across the street. Saya and Alexis followed suit. They were all sitting next to the fence the same way they were last time. This time, no one would see them. I've been thinking, Saya said. I was watching carefully, and I didn't see anyone when we came earlier. Neither did I, Nick said. Nor I. <laughs> Nor I, Alexis added. The house next door is empty, and the Hutchinsons live on the other side. They've been on vacation for over a week, Nick said. So if no one was outside and both of the houses next door are empty, then it must have been one of the buildings across the street. They all looked back at the buildings they were hiding between. A dry cleaners and a pharmacy. The pharmacy always has its blind closed, Alexis observed. It must have been someone in the dry cleaners. We can kill them later, Sai so said. Are we going in? You're suddenly eager, Nick said, raising an eyebrow. The sooner we're in, the sooner we can leave. Okie dokie, Alexis hopped the fence and ran to the side of the mansion. She reached the cellar door and found they had put a new padlock and chains on the handles. Oh, fish sticks, Alexis muttered. Step aside, wench. <laughs> Nick walked up behind her. He knelt and examined the lock. Saya sat on the ground and plucked a piece of grass. Why do you think it's been closed up for so many years, she asked. They could turn it into museum, we'd get a lot more tourists. It's still privately owned, Alexis replied. Apparently the family doesn't want to sell it. Do you know who owns it? Saya asked. Someone who lives Pennsylvania. <laughs> Someone who lives in Pennsylvania, I suppose. I'm not sure who exactly. This is a pig-proof lock, Nick exclaimed. I can't get in. We're deeply disappointed in you, Nikolai, Alexis said, mimicking one of his mother's crazed facial expressions. It's scary how spot on that impersonation was, Nick said. How will we get in? Saya asked, standing up. Let's check the back, Nick suggested. They walked slowly towards the back corner of the building. It was a full moon, so they could see clearly enough without Alexis's flashlight, which was good because they didn't want to shine it around outside and attract attention. Sai glanced up at the mansion looming above them. She craned her neck and couldn't even see the top of it. A black crow. <gasps> Yay! I love black crows. A black crow appeared on the rain gutters and peered down at them. Sai shuddered and walked faster. They reached a stone wall blocking them from the backyard. Who's first? Nick laced his fingers together and lowered his hands. Fun! Alexis put her foot in his hands and he lifted her up. Got it, she said, grabbing on the top of the wall. She threw her foot up and perched on top. Come on, Saya. Saya clambered up and Alexis grabbed her hand. One, two, three. Nick gave Saya a final shove and Alexis pulled her the rest of the way up. Alexis and Saya each took one of Nick's hands to help him climb. They all sat on top of the wall, surveying the massive backyard. It was more of an overrun rainforest than a yard. If you stretched your imagination, it could have been a garden at some point. The giant trees probably blocked out most of the sunlight during the day. The smaller bushes and vegetation somehow survived, despite the thorns and vines that crawled up everything, threatening to choke whatever they could get their metaphorical hands on. Well, yeah, it's metaphorical. They don't have hands. <laughs> a house thrice as big as Saya's stood 40 yards beyond the wall. It was massive, but dwarfed next to the manor. It's ridiculous how big this is. Dwarf. It may have been servants' quarters or a guest house. It was in relatively the same shape as a manor. Decrepit. <laughs> Looks like a good time, Saya said. Nick threw his legs over the wall and hung from his hands. He dropped down, then held his arms to catch Saya. Alexis shoved her when she hesitated. Nick set Saya on her feet as Alexis jumped off. You're going to hurt yourself if you keep jumping off of crap, Nick said. Alexis stepped onto an overturned bucket, then hopped off of it. The crow is following me, Saya whimpered. He's going to eat your face, Alexis growled. <laughs> The crow cawed and dove from the roof, swooping right above their heads. They all screamed and hit the dirt. Is it gone? Is it gone? Is it gone? Is it gone? Saya was curled in the fetal position. It's gone, Saya, Alexis said. She stood up and looked around for her dignity. You don't think anyone heard that, do you? Nick asked. Heard what? Alexis asked. Your girly screams of terror? No, your mother. First grade call. They want your joke back. First grade call again, Nick said. They want their something called and they want their something back joke back. Saya, seriously? Alexis said. Saya was still on the ground hiding her face. Nick picked her up and rocked her like a baby. Uh, why is Nick so big? Alexis, shh, baby, go night night. Saya hissed. Demon baby. Nick dropped her to her feet. This is moving at a thousand miles an hour. Nick, shut up, Alexis whispered. Someone will hear us. Stop nagging me, woman. Let's just get in there before someone finds us, Saya pleaded. I'd rather risk the wrath of angry ghosts than to get caught again. This feels like a historic moment in Saya's life, Nick said. We should document it. Alexis pulled out her camera and took a picture of Saya before she could protest. I bet there's something creepy in the background of this picture. That'd be awesome. All right, Nick said. You guys check the windows. I'll check the doors. 
Nick started off across the yard looking for doors. Saya walked up to the first window. Uh, yeah, the lowest windows were four feet above her head. We got this, Alexis said. She wrapped her arms around Saya's legs and lifted her as high as she could. Why can't I ever be the one on the ground? Saya whined, reaching for the wall. You couldn't lift a squirrel, Saya, Alexis retorted. Can you reach the window? Is Alexis just super buff? That'd be great. Yeah, I, oops, Saya pulled her hand away holding a broken latch. Nice one. Alexis lowered Sai to the ground and dug through her bag for a flashlight. I'm sure we can fix it, Sai said quickly. It's just this little part here that's broken. Alexis looked around for Nick. He was halfway to the other side of the mansion. She flicked on her light and shined it directly into his face. He flailed his arms and tripped. Wait, what? Oh, so he's far away and she shined a light in his face and he, okay, got it. Alexis and Saya gave him a thumbs up. He trudged over. What? I found a way in, Saya said, holding up the broken window latch. Nick snorted. I guess that's one way to do it. We're going to stop it there since we stopped the other video when they were about to go into the mansion for the first time. A lot of you asked for me to finish reading this manuscript on the first video. Let me know if you still want me to do that. Because if y'all don't want to hear it, I will be finishing this on my own time. We're on page 25 of 155, so we could be strapped in for a little series here. Thank you for watching and thank you so much to my patrons for sponsoring this video. If you would like access to bonus videos and weird vlogs and my old vlogs and early access to every video that I post, as well as entry to our Discord channel and a lot of other perks, go to patreon.com slash Hannah Lee Kidder. And I'll see you next week. Bye.